the first five hacks video went crazy. One of the best videos I've ever posted on this channel. So I thought, let me do it again. Today we're doing five more Davinci Resolve hacks that will take your color grading from here to here and will make your life that much easier. And before we start, it wouldn't be another amazing hacks video without another DaVinci Resolve Studio license giveaway. So stay tuned around the minute three or so and enter the world that comes up out here in the comments and make sure you're subscribed for your chance to win one DaVinci Resolve Studio license. Let's get into it. Hack number one, split toning without LUTs. So many people grab a LUT, put it on their footage and expect that warm highlights, cool shadows and sure, it's easy and it's quick and you get some sort of result, but you're stuck into someone else's look. Split toning is different. It's you adding just the right amount of warm to your highlights and cooler tones to your shadows, shaping the mood of your image manually. There are many ways to do this, but this is one of the ways that I really like to use. Go into your custom curves, grab U versus U and gently push your highlights towards a warm orange. Then grab your shadows and drag them towards teal or blue. Now it's that easy and you build that cinematic contrast yourself, fully adjustable, no baked in LUTs and because you're doing it with curves, you control exactly how far those tone shifts. Add an S curve on top and you got a professional looking grade just like that. Hack number two, it's using the Color Warper, specifically the newly released Chroma Warper. This tool is actually ridiculous how easy it is to use and I'm not sure why so many people stick to color wheels instead. The Chroma Warper is like grabbing a paintbrush and reshaping your image directly. You're not pushing slider and hoping for the best. You're literally dragging colors where you want them to be. Here's how I usually use it. I grab my skin tones first and if they're a bit too cool, just nudge them warmer until they feel natural. Then look at your greens, especially digital greens from cameras, which often look very harsh. Take these and shift them towards a softer cinematic olive tone. What I love about this tool is speed and precision. No complicated qualifier or endless tweaking wheels. You're sculpting the image by hand exactly how you want it to look especially for very fast turnaround project or when you want to build a new look from scratch, this tool is absolute gold. All right, that's the time of the video that you all probably were waiting for, which is the chance to win a DaVinci Resolve Studio license. Just simply enter this word down below in the comments and make sure you subscribe and I'll pick a winner within two weeks of this video release. Now, let's go back to the video. Hack number three is an absolute lifesaver. We've all been there, we're finished the edit, we're color grading and we're copying and pasting grading between each clips. And when we go to export, all of the clips that we stabilized before, they're not stabilized before. And that's because when you copy and paste grades, the Vint Resolve also overrides any stabilization, which gets very annoying. So here's how to stop that from happening. Instead of doing a normal paste, right click on the footage of the gray that you want to paste and click grab a still. Then go into all of the other clips that you want this grade applied but you already stabilized. Make sure you are in the gallery and stills and the grade is selected. Now right click on it and click apply grade. Now you can finally copy grades freely. All of your nodes, your color adjustments without messing up the stabilization, your reframing or any other transforms you already nailed. It's a bit of a tedious step, but once you get used to it, it's actually very quick. It will save you hours and just the headache of thinking about restabilizing all of the clips. Hack number four, it's making your image feel more filmic and cinematic, creating a glow effect, but without using DaVinci Resolve integrated glow effect, because to be honest, I feel like sometimes it's a bit overpowering and it's targeting the wrong part of the image. So here's how to do it. Step one, add a new node just before the last color space transform. This is where it will build the glow. Step two, go to the effects panel, search for Gaussian blur and apply to this node. Start with a really low value, around 0.15 to 0.35. Just enough to soften the details without turning the whole image into fog. Step three, right click the node, go to composite mode and select soft light. This blends the blurred highlights back into the image 
instantly creating a natural bloom effect that feels like you just shot it with a diffusion filter. Now, here's the important part. It'll probably look too strong at first, so you have to go to the key tab and pull down the output gain to somewhere between 0.3 and 0.6. This is basically the opacity of your glow, letting you control exactly how much of that dreamy look you want. Now, another optional tip is to actually select the part of the image that you want the glow to be in with a qualifier. And this will create a mask that you can then blur out just so it's very blended with the image. And you can select exactly the part of the image that you want to glow. This is honestly a much better way of doing it, but it's optional and you don't really have to do it if you don't want to. That's it. One node, three tweaks, and you got a professional looking glow even in the Vinci Resolve free version. Hack number five, and the last one, it's all about halation, which is this reddish tint that some of the edges that are backlit get whenever you shoot on film, or simply when you apply a very expensive plugin like the Enhancer. But this is how you do it in the Vinci Resolve for free. Step one, create a parallel node either on your color or grain node. I recommend the gray node because I think it just looks better to mix it up. This keeps the effect separate so you can blend it in softly. Step two, add the edge detect effect to this node. Drop the threshold until you see fine outlines around bright areas. Then blur slightly to soften the edges. We don't want a harsh outline, just a faint halo map. Step three, use a Luma qualifier to isolate the brightest parts of your image and remember to keep it tied to highlights only, so halation doesn't spill everywhere. I like to put low around 60 to 70 and high around 80 to 90. Step four, on this node, push the gain color wheels towards a soft red orange tint. You want to match that filmic look. Step five, change the composite mode to either screen or add whatever it works better for your footage. And in the key tab, lower the output gain to around 0.2 to 0.4. This makes the halo barely kiss the image, instead of looking like a glow effect. And that's it, this is how you get this beautiful halation effect for free within the Vintage Resolve. It might not be perfect, but honestly, this halation effect does not have to be seen in all of the footage, and if you see it extremely well, it might be because you put too much of it. And there you have it, five color grading hacks to step up your color grading in 2025 within the Vinci Resolve. And again, don't forget to enter the giveaway by commenting this word down below. Make sure you like the video, you subscribe, and thanks again for sticking around until here, and I'll see you guys next week in the next video.